Image alt text seems so simple at first glance that web developers sometimes take it for granted without realizing how beneficial it can be for accessibility and SEO. So what exactly is image alt text? Well, image alt text, also known as alternative text, is used by screen readers and search engines to determine what an image is all about. It describes the content of an image and hopefully it also places it in a context, that is the context of the website or web page it's a part of. Now to create the alt text for an image, we use the alt attribute on an image element in our HTML markup. So here we have an image tag with the source attribute which points to the file for the image, but we also have this alt attribute. And in this example, we see the alt attribute has a value of woman walking dog in Central Park. And you can see from the image that this is a pretty good description of what it's all about. You might have also heard the alt attribute described as being an alt tag. However, this seems like a misnomer to me. I prefer to use the term alt text or alt attribute. Although we are tagging the image in a way, an HTML tag is technically an element enclosed in angle brackets, such as an H1. Why is image alt text important? Well, in the world of SEO, one of the most important things we can do is create a page which is accessible to search engines and users. This means creating alt text for each image on our site, ideally including keywords related to our content. In terms of SEO, web crawlers that index and rank sites have to rely on image processing algorithms. You see, search engine crawlers don't visually understand and interpret images in the same way that a sighted user would. So a fuzzy version of this image, for instance, might be analogous to the more restricted way a web crawler would interpret it. This is where alt text steps in to provide web crawlers with interpretable text content. As we can imagine, by omitting this information from our images, there's less of a chance that Google will index them. As an example, a search for the phrase legendary guitarist results in the images indexed by Google for that topic. So by ignoring alt text, we potentially miss out on a great source of SEO traffic. Now alt text is also an opportunity to use any keyword or keywords being targeted for SEO purposes. While we don't want to overdo it and stuff our alt text with these keywords, it is a good idea to use them in at least an image or two on the page. And you can think about using tangentially related keywords as well. Now when it comes to accessibility, without alt text we potentially ignore thousands of visually impaired users. Visually impaired users employ screen readers to navigate and receive feedback as they explore a web page. These screen readers read the images alt text aloud. Let's use Mac's voiceover utility to experience the way that a screen reader verbalizes website content. If we navigate to this image of a pair of monkeys, for example, you'll hear the text contained in the alt attribute read aloud by the screen reader. You are currently on a heading level two. A pair of recess macaques grooming each other image. You are currently on an image. Now alt text also serves as a fallback when an image can't be loaded on the page. And assuming that that image was important in the first place, alt text ensures that the user still receives the intended information. So here's an example where an image of a boombox was unable to load. As you can see, the alt text stepped in nicely to describe the missing image. Now that we understand the role and importance of alt text, let's learn some strategies for writing it effectively. First of all, we want our image alt text to be descriptive and specific. And this is really important. We also want to take into consideration the context in which our image exists. Taking this image of a guitar, for example, what are some of the different ways we could write alt text for it? Well, we could simply use the word guitar. But in general, this alt text feels a little bit too generic. Also, as a rule of thumb, we kind of want to avoid single word alt text. So how can we get more descriptive and specific about it? Well, we could say Fender Stratocaster guitar. By including the make and model Fender Stratocaster, 
we're getting more specific and hopefully closer to what a user might actually be searching for. But now let's also consider the context in which this image resides. So if this image was used on a website called 10 types of electric guitars, for example, then that second option, Fender Stratocaster guitar, might be a good choice. But what if the website was about the history of legendary guitarists and their guitars? Well now, Jimi Hendrix Olympic White Fender Stratocaster guitar might be a more descriptive and specific choice considering the context. So giving context to an image helps Google understand how it relates to the website or the web page or article in which it lives. By the way, just so you know, it's unnecessary to begin all text with the words image of or picture of or something like that. Instead, we just want to get immediately to the point and describe the image. You see, screen readers and Googlebots already understand that the element is an image because of the HTML markup. While it's important to be descriptive and specific, we also don't want to push it too far. For example, let's say we had used Jimi Hendrix 1969 black and white Fender Stratocaster electric guitar legendary guitarist classic rock. Now we risk our content being identified as spammy by Google's algorithm. This is often referred to as keyword stuffing or over optimization. Google is smart enough to identify this kind of trickery. So try to avoid being repetitive and adding superfluous details. One trick you can use is to close your eyes and sort of imagine the alt text in your mind. See what kind of mental imagery it conjures. Ask yourself if it can be more descriptive. Or perhaps it's too wordy and can be condensed. Now in terms of overall length, it's best to keep alt text relatively short. Somewhere around 125 characters or less is usually recommended. You can think of it like a tweet. Keep it as concise as possible. Many websites contain imagery that's simply decorative. Things like dividing lines and shapes, ornaments, illustrative decorations, and so on. These images add character and vibe to a site, but they don't really add informative content to it. One way you can think about it is, if you can remove the image from the site and the site doesn't lose any essential information, you can consider the image to be decorative. As an example, here's a decorative illustration from Udemy.com of people holding hands. Now while it does add character and style to the site, eliminating it probably wouldn't result in a loss of critical information. So in these cases, we want to include the alt attribute in our markup, but we want to leave the alt text value empty. And here you can see an example of that. We just have the alt attribute equal to a pair of empty quotes. Now I hear you thinking, if the alt text is empty, why include the attribute at all? Well, here's the key thing. Including the empty alt attribute is actually a signal of intentionality. We're intentionally telling Google and screen readers that the image is purely decorative. And here's why it's also practical. You see, with screen readers, providing the empty alt attribute can prevent unnecessary noise, so to speak. For example, let's see how a screen reader interprets this decorative image when it has an empty alt attribute. Get Udemy Business. Heading level 3, transform your life through education. Link. Well, you can see that the screen reader skips over and ignores the decorative image. However, if we completely remove the alt attribute, the screen reader reads the file name, slash transform-2x-v3.jpg, which doesn't seem too useful. Get Udemy business, slash, transform dash 2x dash 3 dot jpeg, unlabeled image. There are also going to be times when an image is decorative, but is more complex than a simple shape or ornament. So for example, let's say that we had a website which was about stress management. We might use a decorative photo like this one to give our design an overall feeling of relaxation and well-being, just to set a tone or a mood. Now while this photo might contribute to the overall feeling and design, it doesn't contain vital or essential information. So in these cases, rather than leaving the alt text blank, we can use the alt text to convey emotion and mood. And that way, a visually impaired user can get a similar experience to that of a sighted user. And in a way, they can enjoy the stylistic and design choices that we've made with the site, the mood that we wish to convey.
I hope this video has inspired you to spend some time creating effective alt text for your images. We explored the role of alt text in accessibility, and we also saw how alt text is used by search engines to help them understand the content of your images. And so this can be taken as a really great SEO opportunity to help Google index and rank your website. So if you want to take your web development skills to the next level, check out the Code Creative Store for courses and free content. I'm going to leave a link for you in the description and the comment sections down below. See you next time.